Satnam, yogis, yoginis, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to this course. I was about to say mantra course for a moment. <laughs> it was that long. Welcome back to this Mool Mantra course. And we are going to start today with the car, with the sound car. Let us tune in chanting three times the Mool Mantra. Let me put it on the screen. Here it is. Let's chant it three times to tune in to that vibration. Ekonkar satanam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajuni saibhang gur parasad jap ad sach jugad sach he bi sach nanak ho si bi sach Ek onkar satanam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat Ajuni saibhang gur parasad jap ad sach jugad sach he bi sach nanak ho si bi sach Ek onkar satanam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajuni saibhang gur parasad jap Ad sach jugad sach he bi sach nanak ho si bi sach And we are going to concentrate today on the sound of kar. So let us start by chanting kar. Kar, 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 One to three. Ek onkar. Ek onkar. Ek onkar. Ek onkar. Ek onkar. Ek Kar, 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 kar sounds kar, 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 k, k, the k is a uh, very short, yeah, kar, but the a uh, is long, kar, it's not, it's not a long, a, it's not a long vowel sound, but it is a sound that asks to be chanted long, like, Ong. If you remember when we were chanting the Ong, the last uh, episode, the last uh, part of this course, it was the end, the end of Ong, excuse me. The end of Ong was long, and the, um, yeah, long, yeah? And the G was short and, and cutting down. So the Ong, the G was kind of, contracting and it was like uh, like coming back to the center in a way if in the center I use this word very consciously because the center is number five is the center of all the numbers but the fifth chakra is like where our words are produced and this is where the guttural sounds vibrate so the K and the G vibrate in the throat so it's like ek starting in the throat and then ong coming back to the throat so it's coming back to the center and now car starts from the center k, k 
Kar. And the R, but the R doesn't seem to come back to the, to the throat. The R is kind of moving on, moving forward. The R sound is a sound that activates and accelerates. So it gives energy and, and movement. Yeah. So car, 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 like a car, like a, like a vehicle. Yeah. It wants to take you somewhere. This sound, it con car. Car is like driving your car. You want to go somewhere, like a cart, like a carriage. Yeah. You are carrying something. You have a cargo to carry somewhere. Yeah. So there is a sense of movement in a space. There is a sense of movement and movement in a space. Yeah. And a particular direction as well. Um, though their direction would not be specified by car itself, but by the ik, yeah. And um, car, career, yeah, our professional uh, path that we work on. So it's like carrying, like carrying ourselves in that path. So car has a lot to do with this movement in our life. Actually, the let's. Let's um, translate the word car from Gurumukhi means the doer or the action or creation. So um, the word create, kr, kr, create in English, kr, fr comes from car as well. I talked in the mantra, in the mantra course, how many English words have a root in the Proto Indo European languages and um, Sanskrit and Gurumukhi came from there as well. So Sanskrit and Gurumukhi and uh, English and Spanish and other lang European languages come from there. So, <coughs> car, crear, create, yeah, crear in Spanish, create in English, cre, cre, that cre sounds come, comes from car. So when we say e con car, it is often translated as there is one creation, there is one God who created this creation, something like that, yeah. So car would be the creative aspect. It's sort of like, like in ik, there is like the seed. You remember we were talking about the seed, who is, which is planted under the earth, right? Earth, ik is the earth, ong was the water, car would be the fire. That's the next step, yeah? If we look at the, at the body, at the physical body, and we look at it from a yogic perspective, which is what we are doing, then the first chakra would be earth, the second is water, the third is fire. So Ek Onkar is going from the one to third chakra. Yeah, from the first, second, third chakra. So from the earth to the fire. So Ek being a seed and then that um, Ong would be the, the roots looking for water. Yeah, and Kar would be the, the trunk and the branches and the thing that we can see, the, the, the leaves as well. Yeah. So it's like the form of the, of the tree. So that would be car, the created aspect, the thing that we can see that is, that has been created. So if in the, in the egg we have an energy, which is mostly potential energy, it has the, the potency and the possibility yeah, to become a big tree, but it's not there yet. So it's a, a potential energy and then the, on, it was like a sexual energy, like a sexual tension between two aspects and the, the flow of energy between them, of attraction and, and repulsion. When we get to the three, uh, which is what happens in couples often, yeah, when there is two people, when we get to three, that would be the baby, yeah, a couple having a baby. A baby is the thing that is created out of these two. So it's like the creative energy manifesting, yeah, in the, into the world. So that's the car, that's the create, created and in, um, uh, I was reading the Japji the other day and it was, I've been the whole week with Car and I invite you to do the same, spend a whole week meditating on the sound. So I went with Car and I was reading the Japji and I noticed how much, how many words Car appear in the Pauri, which is 37. And uh, the numbers which add up to 10 are connected. So three plus seven is 10. So the Jabji, in the Japji, the Pauri 37, it, it has the words kar, karma, karam, yeah? It's all these kare, kare words. And, uh, and then uh, uh, it reminds me also of this term nirankar, which we use to talk about God, how, like the formless one. Yeah, God is beyond form. 
like a, a term that is used all throughout the Siri Guru Granth Sahib to refer to this di divine aspect which is beyond the form. When something has a form, it's something that we can see, something that we can perceive, yeah? So Nirankar would be that which is uh, unperceivable with these eyes that we can see. Yeah. So keep, let's keep on connecting with the concept of seeing and uh, the form in the world and the creation in the world, car, car. In Spanish, there is a word called cara, cara. It's our face. Our face in Spanish is cara. And the face is the face that we give to the world. It's how the world sees us. This is the part of the world that um, we show. So like in the tree would be the trunk and the branches and the leaves. That's the, the face of the tree. That's the part of the tree that we see. We don't see the seed. We don't see the root. We see the trunk and the leaves. Yeah. So that's the face, let's say, that's the kara, that's the face. So interesting that uh, word kara in Spanish, and it's not the only one. In English, we would have words like characteristics, yeah? The characteristics of someone, which uh, is also in Spanish, characteristica. So characteristics are our particular face in the world, how people perceive us, and what is particular about us. Particular, yeah? I can hear the car. In there in that word as well so car particular yeah characteristics yeah character character somebody's character yeah so this is how we show ourselves to the world uh, the other term that is cara is that this yeah the cara which uh, uh, we were on the i wear it on this right hand which is the hand which which with which I do things in the world. Remember, kara is the doer, the creator. So by wearing the kara, you are, you are reminding yourself that you are not the creator. You are not the one who is doing things. So you are like a slave of the guru, let's say, like telling God and guru, just guide my hand, whatever I do, whatever I send, whatever I write in the computer, whatever I am doing with this one hand, uh, let it be yours. That's why at the end, we say, right? It's like, it's your victory. It's not mine. So you are like um, giving your actions away, let's say. So that's connected to kara, and that's connected to kar, e con kar. Yeah? And so let's, let's take a look about, let's keep on meditating on this kar and the three aspects. Let us remind ourselves just for a moment, where do we come from? We come from ek. And just, I'm just showing this drawing and it's already going to remind you of the many things like from the shape and the implosion and ex explosion from the middle, from the words coming in and coming out. And this little rock of the one falling on the water. These are the principles and how that evolved. Yeah, how as it hits the water, then comes a little droplet up and then it's going to want to fall down again. And there is this uh, polarity and duality of attraction and repulsion and the words O and G and ONG and this little diagram with the numbers in the middle, 25811, which are connected through these uh, polarity aspects. So this is what we were doing when we had two points, right? Two points create a straight line. So when we come to CAR, there is a third point appearing. So let's put this on the side for a moment. Uh, let's draw a third point. Imagine there was nothing in the world, nothing in the universe. There was an ek appears one point, on appears a second point. This would be the the line of attraction and repulsion, yeah. And then now a third point appears. Now a third point immediately creates this structure. Structure. Yeah, it has the K and the R sound in it. Yeah. This is an R. I, I do funny R's. Yeah. So if two two points were uh, a sign of linearity and um B-dimensional world, yeah? And it was giving the sense of time uh, and distance in terms of time. As the third point appears, this gives the, sh the sense of space. 
And time and space are very much connected. And Omkar are very much connected. It's ek Omkar. It's really connected. But Om would be more the time and Kar would be more the space. And you can see, because the moment that three points appear, a space has been created. Yeah? Let's use a different color. There is this inside space, there's the outside space. So there is already like a enclosure, yeah, something that has been um, an enclosure has been created, limits have been created, and now there is a particular form. Yeah, so this the blue triangle is the form. Form has appeared in a space, yeah. And this gives the chance for a three-dimensional world to appear. So up until when we had two points, this was a reflection of energy in tension. Now as it uh, manifests in a creation, the, the world, the three-dimensional world appears. So 3D world, yeah? Whoop, 3D world. So form appears in the space. And, and uh, not only that, Form appears, but it's also about the visible, visible form, yeah, the visible world, and there is a number of things which, which link car, to something that is visible. One is, I was mentioning the third aspect of the tree, is those, uh, the trunk, the trunk and the branches and the leaves, yeah. So, let's put here, trunk. Branches, yeah, and leaves, yeah, which which are often kind of a triangular shape, kind of, yeah, a leaf. Yeah. It's it's a kind of triangular, yeah. We can see it, and if you see the tree, we would see a tree is often also something triangular, yeah. We can see it follows this shape and and it's a symbol, yeah. When we want to draw trees, we often use this symbol, yeah. Maybe in architecture or something, architectural drawings, they would use this symbol to refer to a tree. But this is the visible part of the tree, yeah. That's not a symbol for the seeds. So that's one one clue that gives us. Another clue is very interesting, um, it comes from computers. In computer science, when you see an image on the screen. This is just a camera, yeah, it's just filming. But if you see computer games, for example, which moves the computer industry a lot, in computer games, when they want to create an image of a surface or, a, let's say, a bottle, yeah? So this would be made by many, many, many triangles. And they would calculate the position of every triangle and how the light hits on every triangle to decide uh, that pixel on the screen when you see it, what color is it going to have? So triangles are uh, something that is um, has been used in computers, in computer science for drawing images for a long time. So triangles associated to is 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 the simplest form that you can use to to describe shapes. So let's put triangles shapes and I'm gonna just write here PC yeah computers just to just to connect it another thing is a triangle is a prism not a prison uh, though a prison is also interesting yeah oh it just um, it was a happy, happy accident. No? Prison. This can be like a prison. When you are locked within this space, it's a prison. What does this have to do with car? We will see. We will see how, how, this, is, um, how this evolves. But it's interesting that as we are moving forward in chanting this mantra, the qualities of every number associated with that particular a word appears. So, ek onkar. When we get to the car, uh, you may feel like imprisoned in this 3D world, in this form, in this shape. Yeah. 
But uh, a prism, uh, which is the original word I wanted to use, it's something that takes white light <clears throat> and then separates the light into its seven components, yeah? So you would have the whole rainbow out of it. Let me actually draw it. Why not? If we are doing a drawing, let's make it beautiful, yeah? And we're going to have a purple. I'm going to use a brown. Never mind. So, interesting that it is seven. So, seven colors of the rainbow. Yeah? And interesting that it, they come out through a shape which is triangular in nature. So, seven colors. But we know also from theory of color that there is three primary colors. And with these three colors, then we can produce any image in a three-dimensional three -dimensional world. Yeah, If we only had two, two tones of colors, let's say purely like what I'm black, then, then you would you would not be able to see in a three-dimensional world. You would only see like, yeah, black shapes on top of white space. And uh, you would not have this sense of three dimensions. But uh, when you have three colors, you can mix them up. And then by mixing them, then you can create all sorts of um, shades, yeah? Three colors in, in imply already like mixing of them and creating different shapes and shades. Shapes and shades would be, yeah? So shapes and also shades. So that's interesting. But even the very, the very word color should have been a clue. Color, car. Color, car or cor. Actually, in Portuguese, it's cor, cor. To say color, it's just C-O-R, so it's like car, ekon car, yeah? It's how similar it is. So, ekon car, ek was the seed of the universe. On the expansion and the, the vibration which starts to flow all throughout. Car, the space is created and it takes a form and it takes a shape and it takes color and it takes shades and all this is manifesting. So... You see how this is connected. And, and the fact that this is becoming manifested means we can see it. It's not, I don't think it's a coincidence that then is where, when in religion you want to relate to this, to this uh, aspect, this creation of the universe and the divine aspect, we often relate it through a triangle. You can put it also with an eye inside. You may have seen this drawing, but uh, there is many three aspects in different religions, like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You have Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, the G, the O, the D, and I was, I was looking, I, I was reading about letters from Margaret Magnus' uh, book, this little one. And I was looking also online and I found uh, in the Celtic tree alphabet, the R, the letter R, R it's associated, this little R, in a Norse mythology as well. Yeah. It's associated to the threefold goddess. Sometimes it's called the three weird, weird sisters. And it's, it's tell that they, they, they guard 
the guard, the, the guard. I don't know much about this. I was just doing some research in Google. So um, there might be some interesting stories about this. But it says that they guard the, the well of fate. How interesting that they use this word, the well of fate. Because the well of fate, fate is what happens to you. What uh, you are in your life and something happens to you. And when, we, when that happens, it, we often use the word karma. Is my karma, is my fate. Yeah. And we know that there is karma and there is dharma, there is fate and there is destiny. So fate is when things happen to you, destiny is when you make things happen. Yeah. So karma is the things that come back to you that you initiated in this or another life. And, and dharma is when you are taking conscious commitment of your life to make righteous actions or align actions with some um, a particular path. And in this dharmic path, we stop creating karma. And by doing so, we stop feeling victims to our fate and start to align ourselves to the destiny of our souls. So fate and destiny and karma and dharma. And karma would be aligned to fate. So again, we find this word kar here. So another interesting, happy connection. Yeah. Visible. Another, another clue of the visible is the, the face, cara in Spanish. That's the visible aspect of us or the characteristics of somebody. Yeah. Someone's characteristics. Characteristics. All right. So far, so good. So this is a, a way to reflect upon when we come to every one of these um, parts of the mantra is ek was one, ong is two, literally means one, ong was two, three is three, and therefore three is three points like we are doing here, three points. We will go to satna, we'll go into four points. Uh, but let, let's, let's also explore the other way we can, we, we were, we were uh, meditating on with Ong and Ek. And you remember this aspect, yeah? When the little rock was falling and then it was a little drop of water was coming up. So if this was, water was coming up, then that little drop of water is going to come down again. So let me put it like here, like this. And so after the the little drop of water was coming out, there is these waves. The rock, the original rock is already down here somewhere, yeah? This is the rock. And this is the little drop of water that came up. And then this drop of water is going to want to come down again. Oh, you're not seeing, uh, sorry. Okay, so this is, this little drop of water wants to come down. This is this diagram, yeah? So now, as it comes down, this drop of water is going to again create the same impact here that the egg had. So if you remember, egg was the original rock. Ong, the G of Ong, the G is a guttural sound like egg. And it was like the echo, echo, the G is the echo. And as the echo is coming down and hits the water, it creates another wave. So it's repeating itself. So this is about uh, repeating. It's a repeating pattern. So the drop of water will fall down. There will be an emptiness and the water will come in and it will go up again and it will come back again and it will repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And it's very interesting that this, this repeating aspect, it's associated to the third aspect, the car. Yeah? When we chant the Mul Mantra, now this is really jumping ahead, but let me just say it now because it makes sense as, as we do. Ekonkar, Satnam, Kartapurak is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So when we get to Jap, 
Jab will be the 12th element. This is uh, a separate section. It, it, we will talk about it in some other time when we get there. So this will be the 12th, which is interesting because it's like 12 months, 12 uh, astrological signs. There is a re relevance, a relevance sorry, to the number 12. And Jab... Uh, means the meaning is sort of like repeat, repeat and meditate on what is being said. Just repeat it and meditate on that. This aspect that this is repeating, this is the twelve. If we add one plus two in twelve, we give we have the three, which now we just saw how it's connected to repeating patterns. Yeah, we can also see this associated to the very shape of a triangle, which is like. We do, thing, we do one thing in life once, and that's it. That's just something you did once. You did it, twi you did it twice, it's like, okay, something is happening, and you've done it twice already. But if you do something three times, then you created a pattern uh, or a habit. Yeah, this can be habits. This is the number three is the number of habits as well. So car is a creation of a habit. And the habit creates a form that can either sustain us or it can be like a prison. So the habit would become, you know, like the, um, the habits of the monk. It's, it's, it, it could be called like the cloth that the habits, uh, sorry, the monks wear. It could be called like the habit. And, and that could become also your own cell. You know, monks live in cells. So this would be uh, like your own prison. You create a habit first, then the habit, the monk creates the habit, habit creates the monk, something like that. There is a saying, no? Um, the habit, the habit created the monk, something like that. I can't remember exactly the words, how it is, but it's basically you create a habit and then the habit defines you. Now you're associated to that habit, you identify with the habit, and it's difficult to come out of that habit. And it creates a repetition. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's see another thing. Every for every word we are looking at one point, two points, three points. We're looking at this idea of the waves that are repeating themselves. I don't know if we will carry on with this. I think this metaphor was already enough to get to car. But one thing we do as well is to look at every individual sound of car. So we did it with with ong. Okay, we have now car. I'm gonna write it like this for for now. Um, and so k the k was a reflection of the ik. Yeah, and so this is the beginning. Beginning, yeah, and the a uh, it's uh, long, as in ekong, yeah, the kar, and the r. The r is related to the element of fire, as I mentioned before, the third chakra. So this is the fire. You can see the r in the word fire, and it's activating, it's vibrating. If we take the R and we just continuously chant it like rrrr, it's like an engine, yeah, that it keeps on moving us forward. So car is creation and its movement and its activity. And when we look at the words which contain the R, we talked about this a lot in the mantra course already. So I'm not gonna repeat everything, I'm just gonna point a few things. But the R was a sound that is gonna vibrate and move on, move forward. So like a trek, yeah or a trial, or a trip. Yeah, you have the T, which is a direction, but the R is going to activate you, moving you in a trip, in a journey, yeah? So, or a trek, you know, in a search, searching for something. So the R is the movement uh, sound, that the sound that creates the movement in it. So, ekonkar, yeah? But there's another thing interesting. Let me draw now car in capital letters. Just like I wrote ong in capital letters, I'm going to do it a bit bigger. Now, something immediately comes up as we look at car, which is 
triangles. There's a triangle here, there's a triangle here, there's a triangle here, there's a triangle here, yeah, there is a triangle here, and there is a circle. <laughs> so that's, I think, that's one of the most interesting things. We could even, we could even turn the A around. I think I'm going to use this for the... You probably, if you click on this um, video, you saw the little thumbnail. And I will use this. It's quite symbolic. You can turn the A around and it, it becomes like a... Look, like this. It becomes like an arrow. A row, row to the R. But it also is like an eye. You know when we are looking? Yeah, we have these eyes. This is the symbol we use to draw that you are looking at something. In this case, you would be looking at the K, yeah? But the idea is that we are moving from the K to the R, from the ek to the R of the car, the creation aspect itself. And if we look at the K and the R, the two, the two letters are very, very, very similar. Of course, we are looking at the, um, the representation of car in our alphabet. We are not looking in Gurumukhi, but it makes sense. There is a... There is a a wisdom and an intelligence behind symbols. So uh, we are looking here at the K and the R. The base is these triangles. There's so many triangles, but then one triangle becomes round. So the triangle becomes a circle somehow. This roundness of the triangle, this is where the car is pointing to. And this is very interesting to me because we are we're going to realize that Every one of these principles, every one of the principles and virtues that we are studying through uh, these meditations on the Mul Mantra, they point out to the next one. So, for example, when we when we look at ek, yeah, this symbol, which is you know one symbol and is symbol number one in Gurumukhi, but when we are writing it in 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 our uh, alphabet, we write it like ek, like this or like or like this yeah it doesn't matter so it's two sounds yeah so the one already brings us to the two is inevitable as you do ik on appears so from one we come to the two immediately i mean the very first when we say you know there was nothingness and then there was one well, you know, yeah, there is one, but immediately, immediately, as soon as the one appears, you already have two things because there was the nothingness and then now there is the one. So as soon as the one comes, the two comes. So as soon as ek comes, ong appears. So when we were chanting a konkar, it is recommended that we connect the ek and the ong rather than doing ek, ong. Rather than this, we should like ek, Kong, ik, on, thinking of this um, water, you know, the, the little pebble, the rock coming and hitting the water. Ik, on, ik, on, ik, on. So it's like the waves coming out of it. So you see how ik already implied the ong. And the first principle, humility, and all, sorry, the principle is always one, implies that. Even if we perceive separate things, even if we perceive some extensions from this, uh, they are connected. They are extensions from the one. They, uh, whatever comes after, it's an extension of the one. Yeah, and there is no separation. This was the principle. Yeah, therefore you can be obedient and loyal to the origin, or 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 then you can be submissive, naive. These were the the viruses. So, if ek was pointing to the one. Ong is pointing to the three. O N G Ong. It's already pointing to the third, and it's actually is the little drop of water that comes out of the Ong that is gonna fall down and create the car. So it's like the two brings the three already. Three sounds, three letters, and, and the echo has started. And in the same way. We are going to see in next next video how the triangle wants to become something round. That will be the four. We will see what this means into the Satnam. When we go to the Satnam, 
and we can say satanama, yeah? Satanama will be four sounds. We will see how we go into the four, and, and that will point to the five, yeah? But for the moment, we, we have it into the four. So this is car, and, uh, and therefore, let's, um, let's explore something also about the R. Uh, something I forgot. We do every, every time we have one sound, one new sound. We look at the little book from Margaret Magnus. So if we look at the letter R, let us see what she says about it. Yeah, R is active directed force. Yeah, active, k -k -k active directed force. It is r red. It is rowdy. Fiery, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it fiery, yeah. But it's connected to this redness, yeah. And roguish is run, 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 run. That's fire, isn't it? And it is also rational. So rational, that's something very, very interesting. Appears with the three. We will see in a moment. It reasons and acts and reacts, which can be a pattern of behavior as well, yeah. Our patterns. And it can be as supportive as a rock, but if not, it leads to rack and ruin, yeah. Because the three points can be very stable if they contain the one. Because the rock, yeah, it's talking about the rock. The rock is the one. So what is this saying is that as we are moving from the one to the three, the, the, the two contains the one and the three contains the one. It's like, don't forget that all is one. When we get to the, into the three, don't forget that all is one. Otherwise, if you forget it, it's going to become rock and ruin. Yeah, so think in terms of right and wrong. It thinks in terms of right and wrong. So of course, if it's reasoning, reasoning and acting, sorry, acting and reacting, reasoning is an intellectual aspect. It's intellectual reasoning it means creating a triangle and say, well, you know, what falls within is right. What falls without is wrong, which is linked to our view, our point of view. Remember the little I, our point of view, how we look at the world how we see the world. So I see the world through my little window, my little triangle, and everything that falls within my little triangle, it's acceptable to me. And if it's not within my triangle, I do not accept it. And this is a, like, a, like, a, like a very uh, intellectual uh, um, way of looking at things. Now, the intellect will appear a bit later, but this is very much connected to it. The three is connected to the intellect. The intellect will come into the seven, but the three is already reflecting it. Like I mentioned, three and seven are connected to ten. So it's not a coincidence that it, it, it appears here. So, very interesting, yeah? So, um, I don't know if we want to carry on with the, the sound of R. There is so much about the letter R. She writes a lot about this on the letter R, but it's um, really a lot. We, we've seen in the mantra course, we, we went in depth into some of these sounds. So we're going to keep it brief in this time because the video is already getting long, almost 45 minutes. So let's go to the last uh, bit. Let's go to explore how um, a triangle. So this is a triangle, but we also have all shapes, all sorts of triangles. Let's draw them in a different color. There's this one. And there's going to be this one. And there's going to be very long one like this. What does this mean? It means that when we have, let's say, three people, for example, it's difficult to have three people absolutely the same, having the same interaction one with each other. It's generally, one is talking to the other and the third one is listening, yeah? Or, or two feel very far away. There is, there is some sort of structure. As soon as you have three people, some structure appears. And so maybe in this case, it's like two are talking to each other. This one is more like listening. And then, then this one comes closer and then this one's talk and this one is listening. There's all sort of structure like this. The ideal shape, the ideal triangle, would be when all the shapes are the same. Now, this is bringing the principle of 
all is one, we are all connected, we are all one, we are all the same, we are all humbly, humbly, we are all small, but with no shame, no pride, no humiliation, no, no little value. We all have the same value. Therefore, if we all have the same value, let us all be equal. What this means is that the, the principle... The principle, I'm going to do a table. For the next number, we're going to put a table and we're going to start putting them all in the table. But for the principle, the virtue and the virus. So the principle is going to be that all is equal. Or we could say equality. And the virtue would be equality as well. So... When the whole universe is created, ek onkar, and there is no differentiation, and there is an extension without separation, then all that is created is all equal. And we as humans, we can embody this virtue of treating all people and every situation with equality in the same way. And in the same way with equality and kindness. Which I didn't mention, but... Um, kindness is karam in Gurumukhi. And this is the name that gives word uh, to karam kriya. This is the, what uh, karam kriya is all about, the study of numbers. But we study numbers because there is some karma that we have in life. And when we observe the numbers and we can understand what the karma is telling us, we find the, the kind, this is kindness, the kind face, kara, of numbers. So we find the karam. Karam is the kindness of karma. So when we find the kindness, it's like we are releasing ourselves from the karma. So if we treat every situation with equality, uh, it's sort of like in the Jabji when he's talking about Ketiaduk Buksanmari Bidat Tridatar. So the, all the, even the sickness and disease, they are all like gifts. I, I hope I'm translating it correctly. So everything is like a gift to me. So we treat everything with equality and any karma becomes karam, becomes kindness. So that, that would be the, the virtue that we can embody in ourselves as humans and, uh, and treating others also uh, with the same equality, which is sort of connected to what, if you remember Guru Nanak, in, in starting this idea, this principle of we are all the same, so we all sit on the ground to it, and then uh, Guru Angad with with the, with his wife uh, developing the langar, yeah, and and uh, that would be equality put into practice, like we are all eating together, we're all equal. So that would that was uh, quite nice. Now when we come to the third aspect of the car, that would be. Also, the quality is in that is reflected in that in that um, eating together in the langar, no, all at the same level, all on the ground, yeah, yeah. So, and um, virus, the virus would be inequality then. And inequality means that somebody is above somebody else. Uh, and and you may feel like at the bottom, so you may feel like a victim, and that could the, that means that there would be a perpetrator, yeah. And um, we may feel cruel, like there is cruelty, because we are being the victims of something. Car, car, yeah, cruelty, yeah, car. Uh, that would be the the the, the viric virus aspect of car, and um, and the opposite of kindness, yeah, kindness and cruelty. So I'm, I'm just putting it in this kind of relationship, yeah, kindness as karam and cruelty car as the virus aspect because there is there is inequality. Somebody is above somebody else. We can be the victim or we can be above. We can feel like superior, yeah, as feeling superior to somebody else. That, that would also be um, a difference in, in status. Status would be connected to the triangle. Yeah, it's like the, para, the pyramid, yeah, social structure and trying to go up in the pyramid. So that is another thing. The video is getting a bit long, um, but um, 
I think that's enough for the car for this time. I hope it was of service in some way. I hope it helped in some way to reflect upon this. Please meditate on this. If you have any ideas for Satnam, write them in the comments or write your experience of this video, whatever you, it's coming up to you, write it in the comments. And if you write it before I produce the next video, which is probably next Friday, I try to record them on Friday to, to be able to edit it and publish it on Sunday. So before I upload this video on Sunday, if you do it on Friday, I will still include your comments in the video, whatever you say. So thank you and until next time, Sanam.